Hello everyone, my name is Kyle, and I wanted to show you my very favorite PlayStation 1 game. Um, it's not super well known, it has a lot of translation errors, and it was called a ripoff of Pokemon, which it kinda is, but not really. Um, it is Monster Seed. So, this game... I've played this since I've been about four years old. My two older brothers used to play it with me a lot. Um, they had their own saves, and uh, between the three of us, we made a chart that had all the seeds on it and like what they hatched at and uh, what monsters you could get. And I played this game way too much is kind of what I'm getting at. And so I kind of wanted to show it to you, the people of the internet, because I don't think it's remembered as well as it should be remembered. Um, it didn't do great at all when it came to sales. Um, so it's it's kind of like this underground game, but it's honestly really fun. And I think if you collect PS1 stuff, this is definitely a game to look into because it's getting kind of rare to get physical copies of it because it they didn't make many. My game just skip? Yeah, it, it just went backwards. So I guess this is just what we're doing now. Um, I guess at least it didn't freeze. Gotta love those old PS1 TVs. You get one little scratch and then you do stuff like this. Just see if it works. Oh! Oh, we got past where it went back last time. Let's watch the rest of the intro. So, here we are at the title screen, it's lovely in its features, um, so we're just going to make a new game right off the bat. I'm just going to show you guys how to start out a game of Monster Seed the right way, in my opinion. Um, so right off the bat, it throws you into a fight, um, and there's a lot of text, and this is where the bad translations start, just right off the bat. Um, if you read some of this stuff that they say, like, some of it doesn't make sense. Um, this game has a really, really bad habit of using ellipses, like, every other sentence. Um, like, there, look, there's, like, seven in this, this one paragraph. Oh, well, I guess it's trying to cut out what he's saying, but, like, even in, in the normal speech, that like, there was one right there. It's kind of ridiculous, um, but if you can look past... The bad speech, this game is really awesome. It's got really good mechanics, I think. It's a lot of fun to play. Some of the speech, I gotta say though, in this game is kind of hilarious. Um, just some of the things that they'll say is weird. Like, you'll, you'll be fighting another ruler. Um, that's what the summoners that you play as uh, are called. And, um, you'll fight one of their monsters, and you'll kill it, and it's the first time you've ever seen it, and it'll be like, Oh, I've always thought of you as a brother, as it dies. It's the weirdest thing in the world. Like, I don't know why, 
it was made that way, but it was. And sometimes it's really funny, and I, I enjoy it. I think it's funny. Um, so now we're starting the actual fight. Uh, you cannot win this fight, um, or if you can, it would take, like, way too long anyway, and I don't even know what would happen. The game would probably freeze. So, um, it gives you a chance to kind of mess around with the controls, but all you can really do is walk around and attack. Uh, you have action points. Your character has nine at the beginning of each turn. You can see it in the top right. Um, and you use those to move around and to punch. And your attack costs four. So you can only attack twice if you're standing right next to something. Um, so, blinking matters on this game. Being on the sides and behind someone will give you uh, damage and hit bonuses. So, um, that's why I turned right there at the end to still face that guy, but honestly, I should have probably just turned around so he could beat me up, because, like I said, you can't win this fight. It's, it's just stacked against you. Um, they just want you to die here, kind of, and mess with the mechanics. So, I'm going to speed up the rest of the fight, though, uh, because it takes a while, and it'll just save you guys some time. Okay, so now we have officially lost our first fight. So, we get to meet our anime girlfriend, who is the girl in the green dress, her name is Cal, and her grandfather, who I think his name is Wolf, or something weird like that. Um, there's like a lot of weird names in this game. So, pretty much... You get knocked out by those guys in the mountains, and the old guy drags you back into town, and the girl made sure that you didn't die. And that's pretty much all it says here. Um, but I'll let you guys watch it and read all of it if you'd like. I kind of skipped through it fast, but I mean, the dialogue in this game isn't great. It's really all about that gameplay. So, that character just, well, I better goad, and, um, you don't see him again for, like, a really long time, if I remember right. Look, 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 ellipses to ellipses. Like, the dialogue, what is that? Like, they just, why even have that? It serves no purpose. Like, why not just cut those two things out if they're just gonna not say anything to each other like that? Um. Oh, man. Oh, man, the dialogue's bad. But yeah, that old guy who just left, you don't see him again for like a really long time. Um, okay, so now your character is asking her if he can like do anything for her because she saved him. And this is the first fetch quest that she gives you. She wants you to go get a book, and we're probably going to get that in the next episode. It's um, pretty early on. Uh, it's, it's really easy to find, but I'll show you guys where to find it anyway, just in case you get caught there.
So, this is kind of weird, but this coat of arms up here on the wall, you can talk to it early in the game, and it'll say this, but later, it won't say anything if you try to, uh, like, or, like, look at it. It's a kind of weird little note. Um, okay, so we're on to our second fight now. So, this is the first fight that we're going to win. We're going to just destroy these people. Um, these two creatures they suck they're really really bad and like this this fight is literally just in the way of you having fun it's just a roadblock so we're just going to try to blow through them we're just going to bum rush the first one and punch it um because you don't have monsters yet so like you just have to go around punching things oh wow one hit yeah these, these guys suck they're, they're just here for you to get practice punching. Literally, they're literal punching bags. Look, I got two turns over them. They're that bad. Watch how worthless this thing is, it'll do like no damage. Oh, it missed me. I dodged its attack. That's how worthless this thing is. Oh man. This fight is... It, it's... I guess it's cool if you're just playing the game for the first time. But if you're starting a new save, it, it just takes a little bit of time. So it turns out the two creatures that you just beat up are actually your new anime girlfriend's pets. Um, and they just didn't know who you were or something. It's, it's hard to tell with the dialogue. If you if you read it, at one point one says something about training, but it doesn't really make much sense. Yeah, he just said if you attack more positively, like what? Yeah, the special training for the future. like. I feel like there was a joke there that was just lost in translation, and I bet it wasn't funny to begin with, but, oh man, it's pretty rough. I always like this sign, um, it's just kind of funny to me that they put a keep off the grass sign in the game. Um, but now we are headed to talk to the town chief, the elected chief of the town. Because Cal told us to go talk to him. Um, and earlier, uh, Cal was saying that he would give us a job if we asked him nicely, pretty much. So, he is giving us busy work so that the game's story can start. Um, so, pretty much, he asked us if we can summon monsters, which we say yes. And then he asks us how many monsters we have, and when we tell him that we sold them all to get to this town, he gives us a job, and as a prepayment for the job, he gives us some monster seeds, which we are going to use to hatch our own monsters so that we can play this game for real. And I'm going to show you guys the monsters that I like to hatch at the beginning of the game. Um, he always gives you the same items at the beginning, and... Um, there, there are better monsters to hatch, I think, personally. Uh, so, one of the things that he's going to give us um, is full heals in the game. And you only get, like, maybe ten of them to save, so you want to save them as much as you can. They're called the Benny Wings. Those ones are good items. You want to keep those. Um, so, now that we have our seeds from the old man, we can look at the town a little bit. So this is Lemball, this is the whole, like, map. Um, that's the town plaza, that's where the old guy is. The White Armor Inn is where you save. Uh, the monster fighting store, that's where you hatch. And then there's an item store at the Morgan Department store. 
Uh, there's also a little arena over here, which is where we're going to have to do our next mission. But first, we need to hatch our monsters. So, we're going to the hatchery. And um, you want to talk to this lady here. And then uh, go to hatching when the menu um, gets brought up. Uh, also, she you can sell seeds to her. Never do that. Always hatch a monster instead of selling a seed. The monster is always worth more. If you're going to do that. Even like the worst monsters in the game are worth more than just selling a seed for some reason. I don't know why. I don't even know why it's an option. Okay, so we are going to hatch um, some of my favorite monsters in the game. And you can do it right from the start. So we're going to put a solution on each one to kind of round out our items. And for this seed, if you go at temperature number two, uh, that's one way to get this monster. It's called a Garadola, if I remember right. And uh, they're really good attack monsters. They're two squares like long, so they, they don't fit on some maps. But they're really solid um, just for fighting things. Uh, they usually have really good stats. I think that they're the best monster that's on that seed. Um, let's change his name up, though. What should we name this guy? Um, um, we'll name him Todd. Todd sounds like a good name. Uh, so, for this next seed, we're going to make the same monster. We're going to put a different solution, because the last one had weak spiritual defense. And we're going to hatch it at not, uh, 8, excuse me. And um, it, it will hatch the same monster. It's just an alternate hatching method if you want um so this one uh his name is zorge i like that we're gonna put an exclamation point on zorge that's, that's a good name i like that a lot so next um this is like a battle magic seed as far as i'm concerned there's two good monsters on this um and i'm gonna hatch one of each of them um i really like both of them one I think is a little bit better, but one's more multi roll So, this is an Angula, I think it's called. Uh, these are one of the best early game monsters in the game. Uh, they have a special ability where they can make people mad when they hit them with a couple of their attacks. And uh, they'll start running around random directions and punching everything. It's great. It's like really overpowered. Um, so, he needs a good name. He, he looks... He looks like a flying toaster pig. So we're going to name him Pig Toaster. Because that is what he is. Alright, so now we got one more seed. Um, this one, I'm going to hatch as an aggro. You can hatch it at 9. Um... And I, I do recommend, if you're starting a new game, especially if you've never played, you hatch these monsters to start with, because they're the best starters, I think, and it gives you a good rounded team. Um, so this is an aggro, and it is kind of a mix of, like, a physical fighter and a, like, magic fighter. It uses fire magic. Um, they're just really, really handy. You can use them in, like, any fight, and they'll do pretty well. They're, they're just real nice all-round. Um monsters which is what i might argue against the toaster pigs but the toaster pigs i think are better we're gonna name them harambe i think that's how you spell it um but you could always use another harambe on your team you know so now that we have our monsters we are all set uh, i recommend you save at the oh what's that little guy i've always wondered um i, I recommend you save now if you go to the uh, up before you do this, because if you lose, then you'll have to start all the way over again, and you'll have to go through all that text and everything. So we gotta beat these bottom three guys before we go and talk to the old guy. And I'm gonna speed up the video um, so that you guys don't have to sit through the whole thing, but I'll leave the audio in because I think it's funny. So when you're in this arena, if you just split people like that, um, and then just throw monsters all around him. It forces them to back up, and then all of a sudden you have control of like two thirds of the map. Um, oh, so there's five things you can set your monsters on. Um, usually attack is the best, but like there's a setting to make it so they use assistance magic, 
like uh, healing and stone cure and stuff. Uh, you can set them on defensive, which is essentially the same as attack, but if something hits you, they'll come back and they'll hit whatever hit you. Um, attack is just kind of... Oh, that's not attack. That's the, um, that's the one that makes people angry, and it's really good, and they'll run around and hit their own monsters. Um, and that pig did it on the first try. So those, those pigs are really, really good. I can't, I can't stress that enough. Um, ooh, and the aggro... Oh, Harambe in for clutch. Rombe just kicks him in the shin and he dies. Um, but uh, you you can get really close to people and and force them to go back. And uh, this time I'm going to try the same kind of approach, but I'm going with more like just combat monsters. I summoned my two long creatures and he summoned his same Garadola. Um, and I'm just going to set mine on attack. Uh, you can also set monsters on suicide, and if you do, they will just go straight for the enemy uh, leader. They'll ignore the monsters, and they won't help you out. They'll just try to kill him. Um, your monsters will die on harder fights if you do that, but like on smaller fights, you can usually just get away with killing pretty much everyone like that. Uh, so this is the last one of these early fights. Um, I'm going to show a magic heavier loadout, I guess. So I'm going to summon my Toaster Pig and Harambe. And um, I kind of went further back to give them space because a lot of the spells, they have to kind of be further away. So um, the blitzing up in the face doesn't work as well. Um, but, I mean, it still works, honestly, because then you control a lot of the board. Um, he summoned a Bablo. They're really strong uh, combat monsters, but they're really weak magically, like they can't take much um, in the way of magical attacks. Oh man, that guy's angry too, that pig is two for two. Like he just keeps attacking that, oh, oh dude, and Harambe wins it. Harambe in clutch, dude, you always... Okay, so now we gotta go and talk to the town chief, but before I forget, I wanna show you guys how to change your character's name. You go to your options and go status. Uh, select your character, and then once it brings up your character's stats, you press circle, and that will let you change your name. Um, I've forgotten to do it up to this point. Uh, if you guys don't know, my character name in most games is Carl, in all caps, followed by three exclamation points. It fits in most games, most games let me do it, and I really like the idea of my guy just screaming Carl at people. So, um, now my name is Carl, and your name can be whatever you want it to be. Uh, so, we are going to talk to the town chief to get our real job now. Now, oh, and there's also this whole message board you can activate here, but it doesn't do anything this early in the game. Um, so he's going to tell us to go to this fortress and, like, list, or, like, read what he says here. Because in a second he'll tell us that we have to go to this impregnable fortress. Like, he... He tells us, like, like we can't get in there, and I, I want to just show you guys this fortress, um, just as, like, a little bonus. I was going to end the clip right after we talked to this guy, but I, I want to show you guys, while it's fresh in your mind, what this man lied to you about. Um, okay, right here, right here. Moreover, the fortress they've recently built on the Hill of Battle is said to be an impregnable fortress. Oh, man. Let's, let's go see this impregnable fortress. Um, so, I want to thank you guys for watching this video. It's almost over, by the way. Um, if you liked it, please like it and subscribe. This is my first video. This is a brand new channel, and this is a game I really honestly love. Um, and I want more people to, like, be able to see it, honestly, and be into it. Because it's, it's getting to the point where it's, there's not many copies of it left. It's getting obscure, it's getting expensive, and um, I think more people should know about it. I think it's a hidden gem on the console. Um, so, again, thank you. If you watched this far, absolutely thank you. Um, oh, he gave us another reward. We got some more stuff, more Fenny Wing. Um, so, let's go check out that castle real quick, though. I, I want to see this impregnable fortress. Ah, yes. 
the impregnable fortress. How could anyone get into such a place? I mean, there's no entryway. It's it's impossible. What an impregnable fortress this has proven to be. You couldn't just walk in or anything. Alright, well thanks for watching, and I'll have a new episode soon.